The following is a presentation by Kent State University's TV2. For more information, please visit kentwired.com. What'd you get? Um, I just got some Taco Bell before I get ready for the show. Lucky you. I'm starving. Well, I, I mean, I actually have an extra quesalupa if you want it. What? Morgan, I, I don't mind. You can have it if you want it. I have to go. What do you mean you have to go? We have a show in an hour. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand, but I have to go. Where are you going? I don't know, but I have to go. show and my co-host already bailed? See, I should have just stuck to news. Falon would have never done anything like this. These entertainment types are so flaky. God. Hey, bud. Where are you going? Uh, I was just headed to Dave's to grab a sub. It's 8.30, buddy. Dave's is closed. Yeah, man. Dave's is closed, you idiot. <laughs> you got him, Peter. Okay, I, I guess I'm just headed to Peter Pit then. So you got a lot of money on you, huh? Yeah, give us your money. Jesus, I told you. you Omar, you build up. You build up to it. Sorry, Peter. Are you guys mugging me? No. Yes, yes. Yeah, get on the ground, bitch. Yo, Jesus, come on, stop it. Okay, so do I just get, get on get on the ground? Yeah, get on the ground. What the hell is going on? Live from the Franklin Hall Studios at Kent State University. It's the agenda. And now, here are your hosts, Anna Huntsman and Morgan McLeod. Good evening and welcome to the agenda. I'm your host, Anna Huntsman, and as you can see, I'm missing my co-host, Morgan McLeod, tonight. He left unexpectedly before the show, and I don't know when he's going to be back, but... I'm not going to really worry about it because this is my chance to prove to Alex and Squam that I can handle this whole hosting thing. My name may not be McLeod, but trust me, I'll make you proud. All right, let's get to the news. North Korea came under fire this week after launching an unauthorized space satellite despite protests and sanctions from the United Nations. After a reportedly problematic launch, debris from the satellite was reported to be found in South Korean waters. According to South Korean officials, the debris was still technically the most useful import North Korea has produced in the last 40 years. The Seattle Aquarium canceled its annual Valentine's Day octopus mating watch party this year after being unable to find a female octopus large enough to complete the ritual. Which is weird because it's my understanding that it's usually the man who has problems with not being big enough. Toy maker Mattel announced they are releasing a new 3D printer for children that will allow them to print their own toys. In future news, Mattel has gone out of business for releasing a new 3D printer that allows children to print their own toys. A civil worker in Spain by the name of Joaquin Garcia was fined $30,000 for not showing up to work in over six years. The man in question said he spent all his time at home becoming a disciplined student of philosophy. Garcia is expected to publish his philosophical manifesto next week titled, Pants, Why Wear Them? Who can blame him? Well, I think that went pretty decently, but I can't take all the credit. I actually looked up some advice for female television hosts online, and after scrolling through comments about my appearance and making sure I'm not too aggressive unless making a mean sandwich, I found something called the Bechtel test. Since I am a female host, I don't really get it, so I thought I'd get some help. Here to comment is the Agenda's resident feminist, Abby Winternitz. Thank you for coming on, Abby. Thank you for having me. 
So what exactly is the Bechtel test? Uh, the Bechtel test is basically a test that's used in film and television to determine the level of independence of its female characters. Oh. Well, I'm a female character. Right. Basically, the show passes the test if a character can hold a conversation without mentioning any men. Okay, that's it? Seriously, that's easy. I can pass with flying colors. Just ask Alex and Squam. Actually, you just failed. What? No, I didn't. It hasn't started yet. It starts now. So, Abby, did you do anything fun this weekend? Oh, you know, I just went to the movies and did some homework. Did you do anything for Valentine's Day? Be careful on that one. What? I was just going to ask if you hung out with your boyfriend. Yikes. <laughs> what? Are boys a sensitive subject? Well, no, but you just failed the test. Again. Dang it. Okay, start over. Okay, I'll go first this time. So, how are your classes going? Uh... They're going pretty good so far. I just have this one professor that is giving me such a hard time. He just, mm. um, I mean, the professor whose gender I will not name is awful. That's the worst. He is the worst. Oof. You were so close. <sighs> Dang it, this is actually really difficult. But third time's the charm. I know, why don't you say man every time I'm about to talk about a man? It can be like our secret code word. Um, sure. Why don't we talk about what you did for the agenda this week? That's a pretty good idea. Um, I did a video with Sam. Man. I mean, I wrote a desk segment with Emma. Oh, and Alex. Man. Shoot. Um, well, I was talking to Austin. Man. No, that doesn't count. It was Austin. True. Go on. We were actually talking about Morgan. Man. Oh, man. Man. Gah! Abby, this is so hard. I never realized how much I just naturally talk about men. Well, don't feel too bad. Only about 25% of movies and TV shows since 2000 have passed the test. But I want to be part of that 25%. I feel like I've disappointed the feminist community. It's okay. The feminist community is used to being disappointed. And you're doing a great job so far, even if you can't pass some silly test. You know, actually, this whole conversation about not passing the Bechtel test has passed the Bechtel test. I didn't even think about that. You know what, Abby? No more feeling down about myself. My dad always said I was a strong woman. It was good while it lasted. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to go burn some bras and post rants on Tumblr. And I've got a show to host. Thank you so much for being here, Abby. That's more I can say for, than I can say for my ex-boyfriend. Shoot, the agenda will be right back. Warning, this video contains explicit material not swim suitable for young scuba divers. Octopi Gone Wild searches year-round to find the hottest eight-legged babes from sea to shining sea. These are the kind of octopi you've only fantasized about in your wildest, wettest dreams. Just the way you've always wanted them. Eight-legged and full of ink. We've got over 300 species of these succulent suckers and they're ready to hunt. You won't want to miss out on these cephalopods with cephalopods. We've got scenes featuring 8, 16, and 24 legs. You know what they say, it takes two to tangle. With tentacles, that is. Do you like sushi? Because this calamari is raw and uncut. Not only are they hot, eight-legged, and slippery, but they're also intelligent. Plus, a special performance by DJ 10T Cool. Lady Squid love me. I drive the baddie. By the end of the night, they call me Craw Daddy. That's right. Who's your Craw Daddy? For just $8.88, you can own this tentacle tantalizing footage for yourself with a full tentacle bat guarantee. No squidding around. Get Octopi Gone Wild on DVD and Stingray today. Welcome back to the agenda. So in political news now, presidential hopeful Jeb Bush is receiving campaigning help from his dear older brother, George W. We at the agenda found this so heartwarming that we invited the beautiful Bush brothers onto the show to talk about the new campaign. So without further ado, Jeb and George W. Bush. Hey boys, so Jeb and George, how are you guys? Well, Anna, 
I am absolutely over the good old Texas moon to be here on the show with my little bro. <laughs> Ain't that right, Bush Light? Yeah, uh, great to be here, Anna. Uh, really honored to be uh, at your college uh, television station. Well, I'm glad to hear it, boys. So, George W., I know you had taken a break from politics for a little while, so how does it feel to be back on the campaign trail with Jeb? Well, I tell you what, Anna, it's the absolute best working with my little brother Jeb here on his campaign. I mean, last night we stayed up all night making flyers in our old room at Dad's house. I mean, I don't want to brag, but we still got the old bunk bed set up, you know. Wow, that sounds like a fun little sleepover. So, Jeb, let me ask you, what has it been like to have George working on the campaign with you? It must be so nice to have someone with so much experience on your team. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, hell, it's, it's, I guess it's, it's great um, b between me and you, Anna. Um, I'm starting to get kind of annoyed, really, with him. Um, he really hasn't contributed too much to the campaign, and uh, I'm really, I really don't look forward to his like, constant noogies and like, stuff like that, uh, honestly. Uh. Hey, uh, what are you guys talking about over there without me, huh? Oh, nothing, nothing. So, George, are you pretty hopeful that Jeb will be getting the Republican nomination? Oh, most definitely. I think Jeb is seriously uh, misunderestimated in this election, you know, and uh, with my help, I believe I could seriously alleviate his uh, voting numbers. Oh, dear God, W, I don't think I can stand this anymore. You're making a complete mockery of my campaign. Jeb, that's absolutely deleterious. You know I stayed up all night making them flyers for you. Oh, come on, guys. Those flyers were made with crayon and glitter glue, George, and you hung them up in Bob Evans. They're not gonna help at all. Listen here, Bush Gardens. You know that I take my art very completely seriously, and I just can't have you talking about my flyers that way. And that's the end of it. Oh, okay, Mr. Bush and uh, Mr. Bush, let's just calm down and, and get a, a civil discourse going here. Calm down? Calm down? How am I supposed to calm down when I am receiving a full frontal attack from Bush's baked beans over here on my artwork, the likes of which not even Iraq has seen? And how am I supposed to calm down when I have a complete butthead working on my campaign? Oh, you have crossed the pro Verbial line, Jim, bitch, you get okay, over here. Okay, that's enough. Out, get uncle, out of here. Both uncle, of you. Uncle, uncle, uncle. Get out. Get, good luck with wh whatever George. you're doing. And uh, The popular restaurant chain Denny's has come under fire after a server asked two African-American customers to prepay for their meals. This is obviously a public relations nightmare for Denny's, so the company is cracking down on its employees. Take a look. Okay guys, thanks for coming in on your day off. Uh, I know it's just that uh, recently the Denny's brand has come under fire for what most are calling blatant racism. Oh, that's absurd. As a server, I always keep my racism inconspicuous and hard to put a finger on. That's right. Thank True. You. Mm -hmm. Okay, look, it's not my job to judge the levels of your racism. My horribly paying job is to show you this tape that corporate dug up from years ago. Wait, hold on. How can we be racist if we only let white people into the diner? We don't do that. We let everybody into the store. M my God, when did you start doing this? What about our Asian customers? Are we still making them calculate their own bills? Oh my God, no! No, 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 no! Never do that! Wait, so, uh, can I keep screening my Latino customers for their green cards? No! No, of course not! That's... Horribly inappropriate. All of this is so inappropriate. Wait, so, I mean, why do we have to watch this stupid video? I mean, can't we just all start discriminating against white people? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. No! Can we watch the video, please? Here at Denny's, we strive to go the extra mile for our customers. And nothing makes us more happy than doing so. We treat every customer who comes in to dine at our establishment with the utmost care and respect. And remember, at Denny's, the customer is always right. Our mission at Denny's across the country is to make sure that everyone who enters our building is treated like Denny's royalty, and that every customer has the best experience possible while they die. Here's a prime example of what not to do as a server. Look at young Kyle, never smiling, being terse with the customer, really acting like a son of a bitch. Have you figured out what you want? Yeah, I think I'm gonna. You get want the black and f the salad? Mm -hmm. You'll see if Kyle was to simply apply the three Denny super service traits caring, courteous, and cool, things would go much smoother. 
Let's give that another try, Kyle. Go wait on that customer again. But this time, use the three super service traits. Hi, thanks for dining with us today. My name is Kyle, and I'll be happy to give you anything you need today. Oh, great, thanks. Um, I think I actually just need a few more minutes. Um... Okay, yeah, take as much time as you need. Thank you. You see, as long as you follow the three Denny super service traits, you can surely satisfy any customer. Here, let me get that for you. Okay. Just gotta clean this table off, you know? Okay, you. Oh, oh, let's go somewhere. Oh, all right. Oh, no. Kyle, come on. Get the Okay, so it appears the old VHS doesn't even play all the way through anymore, but are we all clear on how to properly treat the diners in our fine establishment? Um, yeah, one quick question. We still don't serve black people, right? Yeah. You know what? Excuse me for just a moment. Welcome back. February 13th was World Whale Day and many organizations are donating to conservation efforts. Here to explain what she and her co-workers are doing for the cause is self-proclaimed wildlife expert Sapphire Stone. Welcome to the show, Sapphire. Thanks so much for having me. So what can you tell us about whales? Well, Anna, I just love whales. The bigger the better. Ever since we started trying to save them, I've been learning more about them. I'm always open to exploring new things. Well, what an awesome opportunity. What's your favorite breed? Oh, I'm all about breeding. I'd say the most challenging so far was the humpback. Personally, I love the beluga. I just really love the sperm. Oh yeah, the sperm whale. Oh, I love the sperm whale. Can you imagine swimming with those huge creatures? I know it sounds scary, but I really don't mind going deep. Yeah, the deep blue sea is a mysterious place. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love the sea. I'm sorry, wh what did you say your position is again? All of them. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I guess I'm just a little confused here. Who do you work for? Porn Incorporated. We just launched our Porn Incorporated Cares campaign this month. We're donating one cent for every 2,000 video views. Believe it or not, we've raised buttloads of money so far. Oh, I'll bet. So, uh, why did you choose whales as your charity? Well, whales are very sexual animals. They have sex for reasons other than reproduction, like humans. Hmm, I actually didn't know that. Doesn't that just blow your mind? Whales just want to have fun, like me. Interesting. Well, uh, thank you for being so charitable and enlightening us today. Oh, I'm always available. If you are interested in donating, just go to www.porninc.com slash sapphirestone. When it comes to saving whales, I go hard. I'm sure you do. Have a good night. Well, I feel very uncomfortable right now. Uh, but hey, at least she's serving her porpoise. Dutch police officers are training eagles to take down drones. Anticipating that drones will become a bigger problem than they already are, the eagles are specially trained to identify and capture drones. We at the Agenda were inspired by the Dutch and decided to use nature to our advantage. Take a look. So we didn't really hire a lot of new cast members this semester, so we're lacking a lot of manpower. So I thought, why not hire nature's manpower? Squirrels. When Alex approached me, I told him this was a bad idea. You can domesticate a squirrel, but they lack the cognitive ability to be literate, let alone be funny. I said, look, if we can train eagles to take down air drones, what's stopping us from training squirrels to write jokes? So I told him, if he could bring me a squirrel, I could domesticate it, but as for teaching it comedy, that's on him. Luckily, our cutest cast member, Jimmy Dulzer, is a master of disguise and was able to capture the squirrels by blending in with the rest of them. It took a while, but eventually we nabbed one. We immediately started with the basics. Airplane, food, okay? Airplane, food. We worked day in and day out. No one else believed in this project, but I did. The squirrel was ready. Why don't they just make the airplane out of the food? That's just a joke you Listen, you nutty f Get it! Squam. Squam. He's new. 
We just got out of hibernation, okay? It's always with the freaking nuts with this guy. It's not worth it. I'm done. I'm so sorry. You and your damn nuts! Don't listen to him. Okay, you can be an AP. Although I could see the fire in his eyes, the lack of progress was frustrating. All right, I just flew in from Dallas, and boy, are my arms tired. Do you get it? Okay, it's really not that hard. You don't get it? This is hopeless. But then, there he was, typing away. They said, Alex, you can't teach a squirrel comedy. But they were dead wrong. This is gonna revolutionize the way comedy is made. In unrelated news, tree so big but acorn so small. Why not acorn big like tree? Me eat forever. The agenda will be right back. Shit! Shit! Oh no! <laughs> I love BB-8. You wanna be like Kenny? I'll take that home! Sorry, I'm really, I'm really trying. At last, I can shed this pitiful existence and go on to live in blissful eternity. I'm gonna be honest with you guys tonight. I vape. Welcome back to the agenda. We have breaking news coming in now. A man by the name of Squam Scorefield was found robbing a local Jimmy John's Deluxe this week when authorities- Alas, how much? Okay, wait, what is going on? Who are you? It is I, Tinder Boy. I have come to claim you as my match. Tinder Boy? Like the dating app Tinder? Oh great, listen, we, we did a speed dating thing last week and I'm seriously not interested in going out right now. Gadzooks, this mask must be too tight. I saw the super-like signal in the sky and flew here as fast as I possibly could. Okay, first, I have no way of giving you a super-like because I don't even have a Tinder. Uh, second, did you say you flew here? Well, sort of. I am almost capable of bending the laws of space-time in my 16-cylinder Mach Speed Tinder Mobile! I I'm sorry, you have a Tinder Mobile? Well, it's actually called the Metro Bus! Mmm, interesting. So, uh, I'm guessing by the costume that you're some kind of superhero? Not exactly. Superheroes save lives and protect the innocent, but I am a vigilante of love! I don't think I have any idea of what you're talking about. I am the bloated personification of self-esteem for all those who match with me. The rogue rebound, the sultan of swipes, the miraculous Tinder boy! While capable heroes of valor guard the civic well-being of the community, I, Tinder Boy, hold down the fort at Justice Headquarters, scouring Facebook to find a suitable profile picture. Okay, so you don't help anybody? The only person I'm helping is... myself. Um, Mom says I, I don't go out enough, and she thought this would be a good way for me to meet people, I guess. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Have you met anybody yet? Uh, not, not really. Um, it's been kind of tough, actually. Uh, women don't really look past the mask and cape and see what I have to offer as a person, but, uh, you know, I, I still have hope. Well, all right. Well, since I'm not on the market, uh, Tinder boy, how about you pitch yourself to any ladies out there who might be interested? What are three qualities that best summarize you as a person? Here are three defining traits that describe me, Tinder boy. One, I'm outgoing. Two, I love to laugh. Three, I am aerodynamic. Well, you know, you sound like a real catch, Tinder boy. Thanks for coming on the show. Ha ha, anything for a damsel in distress. Hooray! Yeah, uh, let me know whenever Zeus Glad is in town. <laughs> well, that's about all we have for our show tonight. You know, I think I held my own pretty well. I'm actually impressed with myself. Uh, <laughs> but I still don't know where Morgan is, but Hopefully, he'll be back next week. Be sure to tune in next Thursday at 9 p.m. I'm Anna Huntsman. Good night.
Well, what are you doing here? Reading my sandwich. Why are you here? I don't know. I was talking to Anna before the show, and then I just had this urge. Damn. Damn what? What does that mean? Uh, did someone say quesalupa to you? Yeah, an extra quesalupa if you want it. Yeah. Morgan, you're my sleeper agent. What? Well, I've been doing thought experiments uh, with the teleprompters to control your brain since the 60s on uh, you and another subject. I don't have complete control yet. And my trigger word is quesalupa. Well, yes, I didn't think anyone would uh, make a food item that stupid. You're insane. I'm calling the police. No, you're not. Why not? Because I'm going to kill you. Dude, I'm eating. Oh, my bad, dude. Yeah. It looks really good, by the way. Oh. You didn't really think I'd make a sleeper agent that could defeat me. You can run, but it won't matter. I have your scent. When I had nothing to do so I thought let me tell what's going on around school Grab the remote, flip straight to TV2 I never knew they had a show for you The viewer, a show asking who are You interested in what's going on in daily life What is happening What's up with Jay-Z and Kanye And maybe CLE will win a ring someday You got opinions? Well go ahead and tell us what you think We got a website, just go on there And you can start voting Oh snap, I forgot to say the show's name Let me reverse, this is the best show KS Universe well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man.